I'm reading an excerpt from Ross Paul Dark we are by Winston Graham and I thought I'd have a look at half a chapter today chapter 11 everything arranged now Jim was a week later and they had met in the stable Jim Carter's gratitude was dumb two or three times before he had struggled with his tongue but it wouldn't move now at last he got out tis what I do want more than anything I'd not thought to hope for it hardly begun to and I've to thank you for it oh nonsense said Ross you don't owe your happiness to anyone Tell Zaki tonight that the warrant for Clemar's arrest has been issued. As soon as he is located, we can put him away for a space to cool his head. It is the cottage I have to thank you for, Jim persisted, now that he was at last launched. That did make all the difference. You see, if we had no hope for that... Which have you decided on? Ross asked, to cut short his thanks. Rubens? Or the one next door? The one next door. The one next to Joe and Betsy Triggs. We reckon, sir, if twas all the same to you, that we'd not go into Reuben's cottage. It don't seem too comfortable, if you follow me, and the others clean enough for five years. Smallpox have gone long since. Ross nodded. And when are you to be married? Jim flushed. Fans will be called for the first time next Sunday. I can't hardly. We're starting repairing the roof tonight if weather clears. There's little enough to do. Ginny would dearly like to come and thank you herself. Oh, there's no need for that, Ross said in alarm. I'll call and see you when you're nicely settled. And we like, Jim struggled on, if we would get on to pay you a rent just to show... Not while you're working for me, but it's a good thought. Ginny, do you want to stay on at the mine, at least to begin? When my two brothers doing well for their selves, mother hasn't the same need of my help. So I believe it will work. A sneeze attracted Ross's attention, and he saw Demelza crossing the yard with a pile of logs held in her pinafore. It was raining, and she was without a hat. Behind her, Garrick grown tall and ungainly in mid-puppyhood, black and tailless and sparsely curled, gambled like a French poodle. Ross wanted to laugh. To Melza, he said. She stopped instantly and dropped one of the logs. She could not see where the voice came from. He stepped out of the darkness of the stable. You're not allowing Garrick in the house. No, sir, he come no further than the door. He come that far just to keep me company. He's awful sore at not coming no further. He picked up the log and put it back on the bundle in her arms. Perhaps, she said, he could come in just so far as the kitchen, when he's rid of crawlers too. Crawlers? Yes, sir. The things that crawl in your hair. Oh, said Ross, I misdoubt if he ever will be. I do scrub him every day, sir. Ross eyed the dog, which was sitting on its haunches and scratching its floppy ear with one stiff hind leg. He looked again at Demelza, who looked at him. I'm pleased that Prudy is directing you so well. I believe his colour is a thought lighter. Does he like being scrubbed? Judas, God, no. He'd a wriggle like a filchard. Hmm, Ross said dryly. Well bring, him, well, bring him to me when you think he's clean, and I'll tell you then. Yes, sir. Prudy appeared at the door. Oh, there you are, you black worm, she said to the girl. And then she saw Ross. A faint sheepish smile creased her shiny red face. Miss Verity's here, sir. I was just going to tell her to go seek ye. Miss Verity, just come over this instant. I was rushing out to tell ye. Hastening I was, and no one can say different. 
that was half the chapter of um, from uh, half the chapter from Ross Poltart by Winston Graham. That was chapter eleven, and I love these little um, interludes between Ross and Demelza. Um, they're so funny. I like to think that uh, someone else is enjoying them too.